Okay, uh, we are going to work on a cash flow problem now. So what we have here is a, uh, if you're following along in a book, if you have the Fundamental Financial Accounting Concepts from Edmunds McNair Olds, Edition 7, this is problem 1219A in there. If not, you can, it's all written right there. Um, what we have here is a comparative balance sheet from 2001. And, or 2011 to 2012. We also have some additional information down at the bottom here uh, where we purchased land for 112000 purchased new equipment for 100000 sold equipment costing 132000 with accumulated appreciation of 112000 for $20,000 and issued common stock for $50,000. So what we're going to do is just go over some of the basic concepts of cash flow statements. And what we want to do, what we're doing with the statement of cash flows, is we are determining or explaining the change in cash for that period of time. So the first thing we're going to do is I like to get the answer. So the nice thing about cash flow problems, you got the answer. We're going to explain an increase in cash of 28,200. So what we want to do then, using the indirect method, uh, for cash flow statements is we want to explain those changes. Okay, so the very first thing we want to do is I'm just going to do a little formula here in Excel. I'm going to go equals 2012 number for accounts receivable minus the 2011 number. And so you can see we had an $8,000 increase in accounts receivable. I'm just going to drag my formula down the uh, problem here down the uh, side of our balance sheet and this gives me a lot of the information that we need to complete the problem so when we do a cash flow problem the very first thing we, we need to start with is our net income okay net income in this problem if we look at uh, page two of that and if you don't have the book there with you it's a hundred and forty two thousand is our net income so that's going to be our starting point so we're going to I'm flipping to the my solution sheet here I'm gonna have a hundred and forty two thousand in net income we're always starting from that and then we're gonna adjust that back to cash the next thing we always do is we do depreciation expense okay if we look at our income statement that is on the page on the book our depreciation expense which will be given in in any financial statement our depreciation expense for the year is twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars so twenty two thousand dollar twenty two thousand eight hundred is an increase in is an increase in cash flow then so we've got that information really what we need to do then isn't that difficult so what we're going to do is we're going to I'm just going to go and type this out quick so we have net income of 142,000 ah, 142,000 we have depreciation expense of 22,800. So we always add back items that do not affect, that are losses, gains and losses on the income statement, but do not affect cash. So depreciation expense always be one. We can, <coughs> excuse me, also have gains and losses from assets, from sale of assets. But from our standpoint, just the concept, conceptually, we're just going to go down the list here now and think about what happened. So we have accounts receivable. Accounts receivable increased by 8000 So what does that tell me about cash? Well, it increased 8000 Our change was 8000 An increase in accounts receivable in an asset account is going to be a decrease in cash flow. So I'm going to put a minus sign there, and I'm going to change my formatting 
So I'm going to change it to number and round it to zero. So I'll put the parentheses around 8,000. Okay, so we know that's a deduction from cash flow. And really what's happening when we adjust accounts receivable is we are adjusting our credit sales. So we have a sales number, accrual sales number on our income statement for sales. And what this is doing is it's adjusting it to a cash basis. So our next amount is inventory. So inventory decreased by 16,000. So I'm going to type in inventory. It decreased by 16,000. Okay, when we decrease an asset, what happened? We sold it. So we sold more inventory than we have produced or, or bought. So it's a sale of an asset and a sale in an asset increases cash. So cash is going up by 16,000. If we go to our next item on our income statement or on our balance sheet, we have prepaid rent. And prepaid rent decreased by 2,400. So what happens when we sell an asset? It increases cash. Okay, so cash went up by 2400 Then we go to the equipment account. And equipment is a little more complicated in this particular instance. But I'm going to list it here anyway. Okay, so equipment we have in our narrative there. We purchased new equipment for 100000 So we need to take care of that. So when we purchase an asset, we are going to reduce it, reduce cash by 100000 It doesn't matter how we remember, even if we borrowed the money, we're doing this in a couple steps. We're just dealing with, with the asset account at this point. Mm -hmm. The other thing we're going to do is we have a sale of equipment. And if you look at the sale of equipment, what, what do we care about that? We're reducing accumulated depreciation. We're also reducing the cost of equipment. Well, we had a cost of 132. We had accumulated depreciation of 112 which means we had a net book value of 20,000. So we sold it for 20,000. So we have no gain. So the only thing we're going to record is the sale. We're going to record the sale for $20,000. Okay, so we've recorded our sale of equipment. That should take care of our equipment account. Our next item is accumulated depreciation. Uh, which we took care of with depreciation expense. Land. Now we see land increased by 112000 and we had a purchase of land for 112000 So we are going to type in purchase of land, and it was for 112000 Now is that going to be a increase or a decrease in cash? Well, we purchased something, so it's going to be a decrease. Increase in an asset account decreases cash. Okay. Also remember if appraised value changed, that's not going to change the cash flow statement. Okay. We only worry about that on the actual sale of land or the purchase of land. So we go up and our, we have total assets. We're not worried about total assets, so that's just a subtotal. So now we're done with assets. So we go to our liabilities and accounts payable decreased by 9,000. So what happened? Well, if we had a decrease of $9,000, what do we do? Well, we paid bills, right? So that's paying bills reduces cash by 9,000. Next, salaries payable increase by 4000 We increase the liability, what do we do? We borrow, we're borrowing money. So that's going to be an increase to cash, even though we didn't pay it. But basically, we're in this case for salaries, we're borrowing the services of our employees, which is what happens all the time. You work, you get paid every week or every two weeks or however that works. Your employer is borrowing your services until they actually pay you. So an increase in payable is going to be an increase in cash. Okay, finally, we go down to, on that finally, we're down to common stock. Okay, common stock increased by 50000 So what do we do? Well, we issued common stock for 50000 for cash. Okay, so that's obviously going to increase cash. 
uh, retained earnings increased by 142,000. We've already accounted for that in net income. If we had issued dividends, okay, dividends would be a reduction in cash. So we would subtract that. So at this point, we're done with our balance sheet. I am going to sum it up here. So I'm just using the auto sum. And we end up with an increase of 28,000. 200 in cash and if we go back up to the top that was our change 28,200 so that explains how we got to this point start with net income added back depreciation expense did our changes and in increase and decreases in assets gives us an increase of cash at 28,200 20, I'm going to flip over to the solutions page so if we group these into categories on how based on our cash flow from operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, this is what our statement of cash flows looks like. So we had a net cash flow from operating activities of 170200 Okay, so that's good. We had cash flow from investing activities, which would be our sale of equipment, purchase of equipment, and purchase of land. We decreased cash flow by 192000 so we bought a bunch of stuff. And then finally, from financing activities, we had issued common stock for 50000 an increase. In that category, the two we could put down if we had issued bonds or if we paid off bonds, okay, that would be the category we put it there. So we start here. We had an increase in cash of 28200 We started with 40, ending cash balance of 68 which is where we wanted it to be. So this, you can see, it's not that bad right to do a cash flow statement just follow it down think it's more important to understand why cash changed so think about what happened what did I do did I sell something Did I buy something Did I borrow some money Did I issue stock etc so that's what we're doing cash flow